All right, this is the catalytic methanation experiment. Um, right here is where you can see the reactor. Um, and it flo the, what flows in is, are these gases over here. Um, you got helium and CO2, and then you have another helium tank that helps with the gas chromatograph, and that's how you're able to run that. And then on the other side of this wall is where the hydrogen tank is. And so you want to make sure to turn all of those on. You want to make sure to open up all of these tanks, this one, and then the other three on the other side. Um, and then, then you, this experiment is run but through a computer, through LabVIEW, and the gas chromatograph is run on this. There's a manual online about how to do that. Uh, so this is how you turn the experiment on after you have already opened up all the valves for the helium, the hydrogen, and uh, the CO2. Uh, you will then turn the, the machine on with lab view. The first thing you do is you make sure this main power switch right here is turned on when it's on its green. Then after that, uh, you can turn the heater on and make sure that uh, you have the right set point. I think it can be anywhere between about 250 and 325. It'll say that in your problem statement though. Uh, you don't need to mess with any of your process control parameters. Mike also told us to leave this at uh, just atmospheric as well, 14.7 psi. So the only things we change on lab view, after we turn these two switches on, the only thing we change on lab view is uh, these, uh, the set points for our gas flow rates. Right here you can see the set point for CO2, hydrogen, and helium. Standard cubic centimeters per minute. Um, you want to make sure that they add up to 200. That's important. 6 plus 40 plus 154 is 200. And uh, it's, you should also know that these right here don't work, so you can just ignore these right here. You can know that it's a steady state after you've waited about 15 minutes. Okay, so um, in order to run the experiment, you need to run... Um, I guess just the online instrument one on this computer. And when you start each day, you have to do a junk run um, in order to clear out the GC. Um, but this will normally take 10 minutes to actually run the GC and then another five minutes to prepare it in between. So you'll eventually get a graph that looks like this. Um, this is one of the calibration graphs that show you the different peaks, hydrogen and oxygen, and so on, they're in order here, and shows you the mole percent. And so basically you can use the area of integration to calibrate um, the other integrations and areas that you'll see. Another thing you have to be careful of are these integrations aren't perfect, so you can use um, this tool here to improve the areas that are measured. So as far as just uh, tips and tricks with the experiment, uh, one thing is that Mike, uh, Mike told us it takes about an hour to get the reactor up to temperature. And you can see this, the thermocouple right there, there's a heater inside um, that heats the reactor. It gets pretty hot. Uh, you're supposed to run it again around 270, you know, 300, somewhere in there. Um, but I have noticed that it will get up to temperature quicker if you set the set point initially higher. And then when it gets closer, then you can drop it more. Um, but if you if you want the reactor to be at 270, if you initially set it to 300, it'll get to temperature faster. Um, another thing that we just can't emphasize enough, uh, if you don't want to ruin the experiment, you have to make sure that you run it at stoichiometric ratios um, greater in hydrogen. You don't want to run excess in carbon dioxide. Again, that ratio is 4 to 1, so for every uh, standard cubic centimeter of CO2 you have, you'll make sure you have at least four of hydrogen. 